Hi, this is Michael Schrag. I am the guest editor for the MIT Sloan Management Review special series on strategic measurement. It is my good fortune to have as our guest Andrew Loaki, who is the chief revenue officer for GoDaddy, one of the most interesting and innovative internet companies here in Silicon Valley. And we're here to discuss how Andrew and GoDaddy use KPIs and analytics, not just to manage day-to-day -day performance, but to manage the strategic transformation of the company in a very, very competitive global environment. Thank you so much for being here, Andrew. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here with you. I'd like to begin by asking you a straightforward question for the audience. What's the most important thing people need to understand about GoDaddy? It's really pretty simple. Uh, we have a singular purpose, and that's to help anyone, anywhere in the world, who has an idea, turn it into a reality. And we do that by giving them all the tools and help they need to have their idea start, grow, and thrive online. You've been with the company for a long time running the operations. What's been the evolution of your key performance indicators? Before we talk about how it's evolved, I think it's important to talk about where we started. This business, when I first got involved with it back in 2011, was one of the most analytical, data-rich environments that I'd ever had the privilege of working with. As we've grown and evolved the business, what we're focused on is how did the different metrics, numbers, drive changes in our customer success because the core premise that we run our business on here at GoDaddy is when our customers succeed, good things happen for us. How do you make the leap from what are the KPIs associated with closing a sale, you know, reach penetration frequency, all the classic ways of assessing sales and marketing sure. to moving the levers on customer behavior, influencing change? Financial metrics are inherently rearward looking, right? Dollars show up, not as a leading indicator, but they're lagging. And so your ability to actually get to leading indicators that tell you, if I do X, Y, and Z, and if I move performance along a measure, how does that turn into financial outcomes? Your ability to drive linkage and, and real tight coupled understanding of how operational changes turn into financial changes, that's a powerful thing. There's a set of measures you use to understand the sales funnel. Great, those are well understood, it's a sales funnel. But then, once they own it, what now? Because in an internet business where we have a recurring, ongoing right. relationship with our customers, it's not about a point-in-time transaction. It's actually about a relationship that spans years, if not decades. When you first began looking at the company, was LTV a present KPI. It was something that people were aware of. And in our case, uh, one of the interesting things is we always understate uh, the lifetime value. What we see is the longer customers stay with us, they actually, the ch probability that they churn goes down, mm -hmm. which is really an interesting dynamic because it always means that you're actually getting a little bit better over time. And so we've seen actually our LTVs grow and rise during the time period we've been around the business. And what that's let us do is spend more money to acquire those customers. We absolutely seek to understand everything mm -hmm. as fine-grained as we can. That said, we balance that against our obligation as operators to go take action, right? The, it's easy to get trapped in analysis paralysis. Right. You hear that phrase a lot. And we never want to uh, wait for perfected data before we take action. Right. right? We want to be moving forward, advancing the cause, because that way you're actually maximizing the rate of learning and pace and delivery for your, both your customers and the business. How has organizationally and culturally and operationally you shifted from descriptive statistical strength to predictive slash prescriptive data capabilities? That has long been an attribute of GoDaddy. And then once you layer on some of the newer capabilities, uh, whether we talk about machine learning or data science, where you're using right. models to make a prediction based on data, okay, now, now you're just making a, uh, a decision with a prescriptive set of data. Here you are, you say from the, from the day it was born, it, there was quantitative literacy, there was a data-driven ethos there. What do you say to your counterparts in companies and in industries where intuition rules, mm -hmm. where qualitative gut feel rather than get me better numbers is the imperative. At an executive level, you have to decide what kind of business do you want to run. Do you want to run a business that's data-driven and is using data and gut and intuition where the data may not tell the story perfectly. It doesn't, data doesn't mean 
there's an absence of subjective feel mm -hmm. and, and guidance because not everything can be quantified. I think there's a decision around what is the culture and the environment and that you want to use to make decisions. Here at GoDaddy, one of the simple tactics we use to know that is every business review starts with a scorecard uh, because it defines and it forces alignment around here's the strategy, here are the things we say matter, here's how we're going to know whether we're succeeding against them. Are we delivering or aren't we delivering? I want to use that to shift to a capability that is pretty much transforming data and analytics worldwide, and that is machine learning. Now we have all manner of algorithms emerging where, in fact, those algorithms are capable of, if you give them the right data, of optimizing certain mm -hmm. kinds of outcomes that you care about. What's the most important thing our, our viewers should understand about how you're trying to strike this balance between KPIs for people and KPIs for machines and machine learning? I think about um, KPIs for machines really as decisions you can automate, right? Because the fun part is when you not only have a decision or a prediction, but then you actually have the ability to go implement that and then get that feedback loop all in an automated fashion so that you're getting better and better and better and better. And obviously the cases and the scenarios that lend themselves really well to that, because it's just a tool, are places where you've got a lot of data and you've got a high frequency decision. Places where you make infrequent decisions, once a year type of, of calls, those aren't gonna lend themselves as well to that sort of an environment. Certainly there may be value in some of the predictions you get, but your ability and frankly even the value of automating an infrequent occasional decision, which probably has a lot of subjective factors around it as well, uh, that probably lends itself less well to that tool. What are the, the, the three next steps or organizing principles or insights that you feel people need to take more seriously if they're going to take advantage of the data, think through their strategies more rigorously, and have metrics and KPIs that reinforce those strategic, that strategic intent and that desired strategic outcome? I think the first is you got to be clear on your strategy, preferably write it down. Doing that is actually where all of this starts. The second is get really clear on what you're going to do to measure success, right? And that, that can't be two dozen things because uh, it's just too many. And so you got to distill it down to a manageable list and then get really granular, as granular as you can, on what drives those measures of success. The more, the more you can actually mathematically link something together, the stronger your ability to actually know, wait a second, if I apply effort on this one lever in my business, I know how that's going to ripple and flow through the system. But the best way to do it is just start. And never, ever, ever prioritize just more analytics, more analysis over taking action. Couldn't have ended better. It's been a terrific pleasure. I've learned a lot, and I hope the audience has as well. Thanks so much for having me. It was really great to, uh, to get to chat.